it seems, you know, that in some way God is saying, the joy that my son has is a joy that continues in the midst of affliction. So it is something that is independent of the so-called joys that we are used to. And unless you put away those toys, a bit like when I was a child, you know, I, I spoke in childish ways, but now I'm a man, now I'm a woman, I put away childish things. Unless you put away those childish toys, you cannot enter into the manhood or the womanhood of my son. You cannot. So you can see that it's really different. There is a great contrast. It's very difficult to say Jesus' joy is something that he kindly adds to our joy. That's kind of icing on the cake. As if we have all this in heaven too, you know. We have all this fun and we get heaven as well. In, in no way is this what God is talking about when he talks about joy. He's obviously talking about a deep joy that is only possible to people who have finally come to the place where they don't regard those things as joys, where they do not get their kick from those things, where indeed they have come to the place where they see through all those things. They see the terrible emptiness of those, not only see the terrible emptiness of them in a kind of philosophical, uh, safe, secure way, but they see the emptiness of them with eyes that have been drained of the happiness that comes from those things. If you like to say, do you mean like George Saunders on his deathbed. I think that it's that kind of thing. Where you come to the place where you see this holds nothing for me. This is kind of boring. This, this isn't happiness. Is there happiness anywhere? Is there anything lasting? Then a voice comes. My joy will be in you, and your joy will be full. 